Welcome to Nagalin TV, Sobman Lawas. And uh, today we are at the shop of Shuffle. And uh, uh, you know that this is a beauty and wellness uh, shop, most probably the cosmetic things and the products we use in our daily life. So uh, we have the director here over in my right side and also the uh, Gowan product and plus Miss Angelia uh, Zimomi, uh, she is a makeup artist. So uh, today we'll be speaking on what is the, the gap between the products of Korean, we can, uh, you know, promote it here in notice and how it's going to be benefiting us and among the youth itself, I guess so. So, uh, firstly, we'll move with the director and we'd like to introduce what is Shuffle and uh, then on on we'll move one by one. Uh, hello. Hi, my name is Jennifer. I'm the director of Safo Beauty and Wellness. Safo is a place we curate for a good living, happiness and health. It is a place to settle your mind, body, and spirit. So today we are here with Noel Ham, the CEO of Goan Beauty, and Analia Zimomi, who needs no introduction. Uh, we are here to discuss about the Korean brands and the Korean cosmetic, and India as a consumer. How can we bridge the gap in between, and what is the craze behind the Korean wave that we've been facing or we've been experiencing for few past years? So let's start with the question with, for Noel Ham. Uh, so actually we want to know from you, you are from Korea, which we heard and we know, and that you are the CEO of Gyeon Products also. So uh, how, what will be your business strategy inside the notice area? The main focus is notice India way up. So um, the main strategy that uh, my company has. So I think there's there's two challenges uh, when it comes to uh, the business side of Korean beauty uh, and the Indian market and the Northeast market. The uh, first strategy is uh, there's a huge knowledge gap in both sides on all the processes and regulations um, that are involved, not just for you know in terms of the Korean manufacturing of the products as well as importing it into India. Um, so you know. A lot of it is about bridging that gap, educating both Indian consumers and Korean brands, uh, which is what I've been mostly doing um, for you know, since 2018. And then uh, once that education is there, um, I think I think another big thing is sp specifically for the Northeast is um, you know I'm trying to handle offline is very important, I, I believe, in the Northeast market um, compared to other countries. India has a very robust offline market, um, whereas most countries, the online is, is bigger, but especially in the Northeast, where logistics can be a little bit difficult um, and, and different, I think uh, that's a very big key as well. So I am, you know, my company, my strategy is looking to, um, you know, bridge all those gaps and also um, help more brands come in to both the Indian market and the Northeast Indian market. And uh, we'd also like to know on that. Uh, as you said, you have to bridge the gap between Nordic and Korean products. So how you are going to do that in the ground level? There will be any plan like coming up <coughs> with uh, different uh, seminars or something like that, or uh, you will be giving online uh, sessions to the who are interested on these products and on all, and the buyers or the, you can say, wholesaler who will buy and sellers, you know? So how you will do that? So exactly as you said, um, being on the ground is, is, is a big deal. There's not, a, I think, I believe I'm the only Korean, uh, probably one of the few that are, that's on the ground here. Um, so yes, I am, I, am, I am kind of preparing to do more seminars to educate um, business owners, help entrepreneurs here in the Northeast um, to understand um, you know, all the different aspects of running this business. Um, probably, probably the stuff that they don't wanna know, but they have to know. Um, and you know, I think I think that's 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 really my big point here is that I'm here on the ground. I've been doing I've been consulting Korean brands on the Indian market, and I think it's time that I also take what I've done there to enlighten some Indian entrepreneurs to um, you know consider to make more money. I guess just to it's a way of promoting the brand and the Korean products here. Organically. As you as you said, so uh, you were a makeup artist. You know better what the product <laughs> is, and also you are using Korean products for your customers also. Yeah, so, uh, is there also a plan that you will be using uh, uh, this uh, your product? <laughs> you are already using it. Okay. Yeah, so, so wha what was what was the feedback and the response you get after, you know, from the yeah. customer? I guess so. 
Korean products are actually a favorite amongst uh, all of us, especially Naughties, um, even in the Indian market, it's a very big market, especially uh, because there's so much like Korean skincare and uh, even Korean makeup is becoming a very big deal here. So um, even during the class when I was conducting, I did use, not because it's like a compulsory thing, but I do like it because it's so trusted. So it is a really uh, amazing thing that he is doing this and He's actually the first Korean to do this in Nagaland, and the, the customers can have direct contact with the brand through him. So, yeah. so also we want to know about the challenges you're facing at the ground level. What, what is it actually? So um, on the ground level, um, there's, I think there's two, once again, I, I keep saying this, but there's two challenges. Uh, one is, um, so here, here in India, and especially in the Northeast, I think uh, there's a lot of fake products that come in um, through, through um, you know, whatever means, you know, Moray or, or Burma, whatever. Um, and, and the main reason that that exists, not just because of the border and the vicinity, but also I think a lot of people don't bother to kind of professionally import and distribute because, yes, it does, it is a big investment to license. Um, you know, in, in India, uh, the, the, rules, the rules around cosmetics are actually pretty... Uh, pretty hard to understand and difficult and tedious. So, you know, you're so technically you're supposed to register a brand. Um, and I think this is something that a lot of people don't even think about. You can look on Amazon, people are selling things black. Um, you don't know, actually know if it's authentic or not, uh, whatever you're getting. Um, but if you, if you go through the trouble of licensing it, um, it, is, it is worth it because it, there's, there's two big things. One is, well, if you're legally importing it, um, you know, that's one that's, there's a big, very big peace of mind. But another factor is South Korea and India actually have a free trade agreement. Um, so that means that if you officially license these products, you can take advantage of the free trade agreement and there's 0% customs or tariffs. You're just paying your GST awesome. when you import it. So, so actually, you know, there's no re I, I think a lot of, like I said, there's a lack of education and awareness. So I think, you know, People don't want to go through the trouble, but it is actually worth going through the trouble because, you know, that as a business owner, if you're not, if you just, you know, don't have to worry about customs and tariffs, um, obviously there's more margins for yourself and, you know, the prices can be better for, for, the, uh, for, the, for the consumer as well. So I think that's one, um, just li licensing itself. People are not concerned with kind of making things professional. And then I think another one, um, there is definitely a cultural difference around work. Um, here uh, from Korea and India. So the average Korean, and I'm not saying this is good, by the way, but the average Korean works about 70 hours a week. Um, and I think, I think um, our mindset's always around work. Um, you know, like for example, if, uh, I, I say this example to Jennifer a lot too. Um, if I'm talking to my mom and a brand calls me, I hang up on my mom and I call and, and I talk to the brand. But in India, um, if I'm if I'm talking if I'm an Indian I'm talking to a brand, and my mom calls I'm going to hang up on the brand. <laughs> so so you know there's a little bit, and I'm not saying one's right one's better, but in t you know it's that cultural difference. It's hard when a brand when a when a Korean brand goes I'm sorry I got to go talk to my mom. They're going to be like what what are, what why? And then <laughs> like like is your mom dying? I don't know, but but you know that's. That's, that cu cultural difference around or is also a pretty, uh, it's, actually, it's, it's actually a big thing. And that's why I'm trying to bridge the gap because um, a lot of Korean um, companies don't know this. So I try to explain that to them. A lot of Indian uh, you know, business owners don't know that about Korean culture. So bridging the gap and trying to get both sides to understand each other better is also pretty important. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, also, I want to know, that your shop will get, could be the solution for uh, his products in the uh, Northeast area. Okay. Uh, Safu is usually here in the ground level, like Noel is here from time to time. We can be a place, a platform where other businesses are also interested in coming and seeking out information. Noel works as a brand consultant for Korean brands and uh, like he said, a bridge between the gap. We are here, another bridge connecting the interested entrepreneurs who wants to sell Korean beauty, who wants to seek knowledge, how is the Korean market going to work, how can they ease the process of licensing. 
we are here to connect Noel to those interested fellows or interested entrepreneurs. And by selling his product and giving it as a first hand, the touch and feel is always there in the retail. So you can hear, check, you are here to check out the products, distribute those products if you're interested, which are already licensed, and also seek out information on how to get the products or brands which you are interested as an individual. So uh, how can how can your product can be the helpful for the youth of uh, notice notice in area? Do you see anything in it that your product particularly can bring a change on that? Well, uh, so yeah, there's I think the products. I mean, Korean beauty products are uh, like as as Analia said, very very uh, trusted. Um, there's a big reason for that is because um, you know the Korean government standards are very high for approving cosmetics. So when we put down you know brightening. It has to work. It has to work. Otherwise, otherwise, it won't be able to legally be sold. Whereas in other countries, you can put, you know, anything you want on the on the on the box, and there's no scrutiny. But in Korea, there's a lot of these high standards that all the products have to pass. So in terms of the products, I think they they're helping everyone in the whole world. Um, you know, fact of the matter is we all have skin. <laughs> Maybe it's a different you know melanin here and there, but skin. All benefits the same from skin care, good skincare products, and Korea is one of the best for that reason. So, um, you know, in terms of skin, in terms of the product, for sure. I think another, um, you know, way that I, I, I think that one of the biggest ways to help consumers here in India is also supporting entrepreneurs and uh, business people, such as Jennifer and Analia over here as well. Um, so, you know, I'm always looking to collaborate with uh, and, and support anyone in the Northeast. Um, I believe there's a lot of talent here that's untapped. Um, you know, the rest, even within India, I think the Northeast doesn't get a lot of exposure. Um, and certainly outside of India, uh, many, many Koreans have no idea uh, that this beautiful place exists. And I think uh, given the right support system from the Korean brands and from people such as myself, I think um, if the business owners are flourishing, so are, so is the state so is the region and so are the consumers so uh, so finally we're just at the end we seem so uh, how can uh, one can reach you or your brands to collab or uh, just for purchasing a product how can the one can reach uh, so anyone who's interested in uh, connecting with me any any entrepreneurs or if you're just curious to have a question or want to talk you can contact me at uh, the number that you'll see on the screen and the email um, that you want to see on the screen right now and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions or collaborate. I'm always looking to work with ambitious, talented people in the Northeast. So, Thank you. Yeah. And again, this, the same technique like the eyeshadow, you can uh, just don't spread it when you blend it, just blend only on that area where you put the product.
Nagaland TV, Sop Manulaga Awas. Watch us live on Geo TV and on your television sets as well. For Dumapu viewers, we are on channel number 994 in Global Chapter and Kohima and Mokokchong viewers, switch to channel number 138 on Hornbill Digital. For all news and updates, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Twitter.